Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Extra special thanks to guest lecturer patron Ryan Lilly. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey there, Rulers. Welcome back to Ruler School. This is DMO73 bringing you a feature match for the week between my buddy Paul on White Black um, Brunhild. Um, very similar to the list that you saw actually during the Minneapolis uh, stream. That is, its top end is uh, Athenia rather than Mistletane. And I am playing uh, Ryan Miles' um, Loki Toki Box mystery box deck. Um, typically, you know, the joke was that it was Loki Doki Literature Club. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. So, nothing for Paul on turn one. Um, going into my turn one, we're hitting then Guinevere. It's a strong early start. The deck is essentially a machine mystery box deck, um, but the idea being that you support that by playing massive growth Mosasaurus. So, if your opponent um, taps out to try to answer your machines, you punish it um, by having the, the mystery, the machine, um, the Mosasaurus package to lock them down and then just keep putting the pressure on. So, Paul sticking that Messenger of the Sun. Going into my uh, turn two here. Technically, with the Energize, I could do Massive Growth um, Dinosaur Surfacing here, uh, but he only has two stones, so that's not really going to be very helpful. So at that point in time, just passing the turn. See, Paul does have that Sword of the New Moon, a very powerful removal spell in this format, as well as some Discard, a Blade of Faith. So lots of different ways for him to draw power off of that Messenger of the Sun and also answer whatever I might be playing. Um, but the Loki Box deck actually really enjoys it when you tap out on your when your opponent taps out on their turn because then you get to kind of punish it. So he's going to go ahead and say, well, let's take a look at what that hand is there, Look of Corruption. Just to kind of support what's going on, we see a uh, Camelot, a Mosasaurus, Mosasaurus, three cards that can't be hit, thankfully, um, an uh, Ayu, and then the Dinosaur Surfacing, and then a Misty Dragon Spirit. So Misty Dragon Spirit, great card to hit off of Mystery Box, also just a card in this format that has very few things that can answer it. He chooses to actually take the uh, Misty Dragon here, which I think is a little... Um, concerning i think i would have taken the um dinosaur surfacing just to lock my prevent myself from being able to get hit by um the dinosaur surface you know just be hit by the mosasaurus next turn um in response to the blade of faith here i'm going to sack guinevere to pump herself up which just makes sure that the machine gets to the graveyard that's where i want them to be Seeing that he only has the one stone, knowing that he's already used a Blade of Faith, so feeling pretty comfortable here to go for the massive growth play. So massive growth produces three just for Awakenings, uh, and then I can pay two more to finish off the cost of uh, Dinosaur Surfacing, essentially paying three to cast Dinosaur, and then getting to lock down the three stones with Mosasaurus. Next turn, I'll be able to hard cast a Mosasaurus, so I can kind of keep the pressure going on that way. Even sort of the new moon in his hand right now can't actually answer the uh, most source. It's too big. Um, one of the reasons why I'm not sure the Blade of Faith was the right call there. Um, he might be playing Blade of Faith in the rune deck, but he might also be playing the board wipe. So knowing that he had seen the Mosasaurus and the dinosaur surfacing and wasn't going to keep it, using the Blade of Faith, um, letting the Guinevere stick and using the Blade of Faith to remove the Mosasaurus might have just been the better option. So here he just calls stone and then has to pass. Swinging in for 15. He's going to go ahead and block. I don't have a response to the block, so that's fine. He's at least going to um, use Protection of the Angels to make it a trade. Um, so he'll at least get my Mosasaurus off the board here. I'm pretty fine with that. I two for one him here um, with a card that I've already used. And then we're going to see that hard cast Mosasaurus. Now he has three stones tapped. And I'll once again put him at going to two resources on his turn. Um, having to use the Energize for it. Before recovery here, he's going to go ahead and use Whispers of an Angel just to try to dig into something maybe a little bit more beneficial to use off of his two will. Hits a second Adam Psycheart there, which isn't really going to do him much. Um, recovering a stone, getting a um, 
Stone from the Dark Castle off the top. So he gets that mystery counter. So he's got one white, one black. See, he does have that Athena in hand. Um, there is an Orphica there. He really can't do much with what's in his hand right now. Um, there's not a lot of two drops. I see double Adam Psych card. I see Athena. He's really kind of just needing to um, wait a little bit longer. And it does look like he is playing the uh, Judgment um, runes. So we can't uh, use the Blade of... There's no Blade of Faith right now to answer the Mosasaurus. So he's probably going to be taking 15 damage this next turn. So already starting to play a bit from behind, which is what um, the Loki deck wants you to be doing. It wants you to say, okay, I'm going to keep forcing you to tap on on your turn so I can just keep applying pressure over and over and over again and be ahead on tempo, uh, eventually hitting a mystery box and generating a ton of value off of that. So swinging in for 15 here, taking him down to 33. Going to go ahead and play the IU. There's nothing for me to steal. It's mainly just to help get another body on board. Um... Tapping for it differently to leave my time will up uh, just in case I have a Dragon's Lord's Breath. And then passing the turn back to him. Before recovery, we're going to see an Awakened Sword of the New Moon to kill my Ayu. And then he is getting it to recover everything. And you see he does that have that Athenia in hand. So that Athenia is going to work great as um, to kill the Mosasaurus. it'll force me to sacrifice a creature. You see, with the Orphica there, you know, he can flicker Athena and force me to sack extra things, and this is can be a potentially hard matchup for this deck, uh, specifically because if Athena um, isn't properly dealt with, or, like, you don't leave proper board states to be able to sacrifice things to Athena and she starts to hit your stones, um, then you're in a bad way because you're probably never going to get to cast Mystery Box, and then you're just going to fall behind advantage-wise. So cast the Athena. Going to go ahead and sacrifice the Mosasaurus. I say, yep, you got it. That's fine. And then he can't do anything else, so he just passes the turn, leaving open one darkness. Um, probably try to telegraph, potentially, that he has a Sword of the New Moon. Say, so, okay, well, we'll go ahead and keep the pressure on. Let's go ahead and use the Mosasaurus again. Um, we're going to lock... Uh, the other darkness stone and two of the white stones so particularly the stones of hope um, because we don't want him to like judgment and have access to double dark or things like that i haven't seen too much of the deck at this point so this actually probably turns out to be the wrong call letting him have the extra white the double white lets him play orphica so he's going to be able to flicker um the athenia and make me sacrifice the mosasaurus again the other thing to note here is that there's a little bit of a misplay here from paul um in the fact that he did not remember to tap athenia during the upkeep to have that additional effect um it's generally just a good idea to always make use of that effect just in general um he does swing in here for 12, takes me down to uh, 28. Uh, but you always want to capitalize on that effect from the Athenia if you can. And there's the Orphica. So the Orphica is going to flicker um, the Athenia. It'll come in and force me to sacrifice um, the, uh, the Mosasaurus. And then he also will have access to the Athenia again to, you know, apply that negative to my board state. So it's going to come back in. I'm going to lose the um, Mosasaurus and then comes back to my turn. See, I do have the um, Dragon's Lord's Breath here. Gonna go ahead and hard cast Camelot. I don't have a Guinevere to make use of it, and I want to leave one will up. So we're gonna hard cast the Camelot and put those two um, units back in his hand. Doesn't really do much for me right now because he's probably just gonna have the will to be able to recast them. Um, but the other thing is, I have the donut drone here that I'm just going to let sit on my board and the reason for that is I want something to be able to sacrifice when he does recast the Athenia. Ultimately still not my best play because he can just go Athenia, force a sack, play Orphica, flicker it, force another sack. 
Um, so I just kind of spent a turn doing nothing. But the other thing is too, on this next turn, I'm probably casting Mystery Box. Um, so really I'm just trying to stall out um, until I can start casting those Mystery Boxes, especially if I have one in my hand and then there's definitely one in Rune Deck to start reapplying the pressure and be back ahead. Checking out what kind of the plays he wants to play here. Goes to recast the Athenia. I know that it was coming, so I'll just go ahead and sacrifice the Donut Drone. And you see here, he can play the Orphica and have one additional will. Um, so he actually plays a Blade of Faith, though, to RFG it. But then in doing so, cuts himself off from double white, so he can't play the Orphica. Calling for stone here. See, I do have mystery box in hand, which feels really great. I am at eight, so I can even cast it. I'm not gonna make it unchaseable. Um, so one thing that what could happen here is he lets it resolve, um, but one thing that he could have done, and it would be particularly devastating to this board state, is in response to the cast, since it didn't make it unchaseable, he could have used Athenia's effect to apply them negative two, negative two to the board state, at which point every one of these resonators would have, or except for um, Vivian, would have come in and immediately died um, because of rules, uh, the permanent minus two, minus two to the board state. So both of those donut drones and the Athenia, or and the Guinevere would just immediately get killed without any kind of chance to respond. Um, but because he let it go through, I now have priority there and they're gonna be able to survive. And it, if the donut drones are there, he can't really respond to anything. So we're gonna use scrap and build here as well after sacrificing the um, donut drones just to try to see if we can dig into potentially a Lancelot or something more effective. Um, do only hit four machines here. One, two, three, four. Don't see a Lancelot, unfortunately. Um, but we do see a machine at least get to enter. So I get to, get to massively put a bunch of um, counters onto all of my um, machines here. This sets me up for another Camelot play. This sets me up for being able to control the Athenia so she's not nearly as big of a problem. There's lots of different pieces that come with it, and it establishes a board that Athenia has to make me sacrifice a bunch of things to in order to be able to make me start losing stones. Next turn, we're probably gonna see a mystery box from Rune Deck. Um, before upkeep, we're seeing a power of immortality, um, so clearly trying to potentially make the um, Guinevere have that kind of rebuyback. Re um, so I'm thinking about if I wanna do something in response to that. Looking at what it is it's in his hand, um, we're probably thinking that he's gonna use the Master Rune here um, to wipe the board. So he'll get to wipe the board, bring it back, um, and then uh, wipe the board, bring it back, and then kill a stone as well for three will. He could even potentially swing in with it and then wipe the board that way too. So in response to that, we're going to go ahead and do the Camelot play. We're going to say, ah, oh, well, before you get to revive it, we'll go ahead and destroy it. Um, acknowledging that I'll probably have to sacrifice something and I'll probably just sacrifice the Guinevere at that point because she will have served her purpose. So in order to save himself, he does have to use the Ring of Legend here in response. Um, so this means that it, it has the power of immortality on it. Yes, if it died, it would go to the graveyard and get to come back, but it does have eternal, so it can't be destroyed. Um, so then we're going to move to the upkeep. Probably still in Paul's best interest at this point to do the board wipe and then just swing in for 12, taking me down to 14. Um, and then he can also just play the Orphica. Um, not entirely sure if that's the play you know, that he's gonna choose. Yep, he is gonna try to do the board wipe. He won't get to make me lose a stone. In response, I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, you're gonna kill me anyway. So let's go ahead and just um, sacrifice everything and use the two tokens counters that I had left on Vivian to tap down so I don't take the 12 damage for the turn. In comes a ray. In comes the Orphica to flicker the Athena. I say, well, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lose a stone here. Deciding to lose the stone of chaos. And then passing the turn to me. Playing a Vivian. 
and then I do have the other seven that I need still choosing not to awaken it um, but we're playing the mystery box here and again Paul misses the fact that he should use um, the Athena in response to play those cards uh, to to make stuff come in with little less attack hitting a pretty good one here um only seeing a keys call or a dinosaur surfacing go to grave which at this point dinosaur surfacing is not going to do anything but hitting two technicians an athenia and a, a misty dragon spirit is pretty strong because now i can start flying over he does have brunhild so he can answer the misty dragon spirit that way um but we can go ahead and start kind of tapping stuff down. So in response to the ray trigger, before it inverts, we're gonna go ahead and um, tap down both the Athenia and the ray, uh, turning, and then it inverts into zero. So now we get to potentially attack into it with our Misty um, and, and get rid of that barrier. And we're not taking the damage from Athenia or the Staten Eggs. So Paul, wondering what he wants to do with the rest of his turn. He does have the barrier on his own stuff, so Orphica's not going to be able to flicker anything. Both players sitting at a lot of resources right now. And out comes the Atom Psych Heart. So with the zero on board, the Atom Psych Heart is pretty devastating um, because if it can survive, you know, it can start immediately just removing things every single turn. Uh, and it does have the protection that comes from zero. Thankfully, I do have the Misty Dragon Spirit to answer the zero, but it's just a matter of making sure that I survive long enough to make it happen. Looks like he does have a second Athenia in hand. Could cast it here. I believe he has the resources available to be able to. Looks like he's thinking about doing it. Second Athenia comes down. I say, okay. Yeah, I'll sacrifice the Sky Round Technician. That can die. That is okay. Going into my turn. Those Athenias at this point, I think are only still doing minus two, minus two. Swinging, looking at what my hand is saying, like, wait a minute, do I need to swing at the zero here? Or is there a way for me to push through for lethal? I do have access to a lot of flyers right now. Swinging at, deciding to swing at the zero. So that's fine, I'll let that die. Paying three, casting a Lancelot. So the Vivians will see that enter and get a counter and then Lancelot will put extra counter on everything. access to a second Lancelot here. So now I can remove all abilities and destroy everything, which makes the Athenia's much less powerful. Uh, swinging in for nine with the first Vivian, so that's fine. Swing in for a nine again with the second Vivian, so that's fine. whether or not I want to use anything else on my turn counter wise or add any additional counters here I do have enough to do the Lancelot nuke um, and still have quite a few counters or counters left on the Vivians to tap down potentially anything else he plays so we're good but we're gonna go ahead and do diverse evolution here just to add even more counters to it
And looking at this, I actually couldn't cast this. That's over 10 divinity. I just totally missed it. And Paul doesn't miss it either. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter um, because I could just wipe the board. And so Paul actually just decides, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and scoop it up. These Athenians are going to die and we'll move on into the next game. As we go into the next game, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you're notified when all of our videos goes live, and consider supporting the channel by being a member here on YouTube or by checking it out on Patreon for all the cool exclusive perks that come with supporting us. Thank you guys so much, let's go to the next game. So moving into the game 2 here, um, hopefully not accidentally overcasting my divinity. Um, Paul obviously wanting to try to get an Athenia onto board faster um, to prevent me from being able to keep my bodies on board so that he can still start hitting those stones. You see he did do to take the Energize here just so he can go a little bit faster. Turn 1 Vivian, hitting that turn 1 Mystery uh, Stone from the Dark Castle. Using the Energize on Blade of Faith just to get rid of the Vivian and then playing a Skeleton Horde. A little bit of an interesting turn one. Um, in his mind, it's probably that if he can keep applying pressure while keeping my units small, then until he, when he gets to the Athenia, um, then it'll just probably have a way... I'll, he'll already be applying pressure with his own units, um, and he'll probably already have a way to clear them all so that he can start getting stones. Second stone from the Dark Castle here, probably not what he wanted to see. See, he has a couple white cards in his hand, Flourishing Hope and um, Protection of the Angels. She just decides to pass the turn. Swings. I swing in the air for four, or swing on the ground for four with um, Guinevere. It is going to get killed. The Skeleton Ord is going to block it and get killed. It is not a trade, though, because Guinevere is a 4-6 joking about trying to attack him for zero damage and then pass the turn so he does see that athenia there nothing to do during the upkeep unfortunately so he just gets to call stone finally seeing some white you see he does have that messenger of the sun in hand Looks like also a gem mallet panda potentially to help with some ramp boy are just gonna go ahead and see the messenger pop out here now he does have um power of immortality uh, in the grave here, or in the rune deck here, so he could use that to help draw power, um, protect the messenger of the sun, a lot of different things that he could do. Swinging in for another um, six, he's gonna throw the token under it. I see that's fine. Massive growth cast here. into the dinosaur surfacing saying hey you don't have access to white right now you have a lot of black this dinosaur is probably going to get to survive we'll go ahead and hit those three stones and then even if you have something in the upkeep you won't be able to do anything with it call stone does hit the magic stone of hope so if he has the blade of faith here he can remove it but that would leave him with just one dark um, which i know is pretty good for me to have him in that position so he just has to pass the turn there After recovery, we're going to go ahead and do Dragon's Lord's Breath to put the Messenger of the Sun back in your hand before we even move to combat. This is also primarily to see if I can bait out that Protection of the Angels that he played last game. He's going to go ahead and use Whispers of the Angels, though, just to be able to draw two and gain eight before it gets bounced back to my hand, or bounced back to his hand. So you have another surfacing there, so we'll go ahead and uh, have that ready to go next turn. See a donut drone, which we will immediately sacrifice to put onto the four counters onto the Guinevere and just maximize damage for the turn. Swing in for 15, take him down to 33. Swing in for four and swing in for four to hit him for eight, taking him down to 25.
Paul being at four stones, going into five stones now. Could cast the Athenia, but right now the Athenia is not going to do much against this board state. Um, so he is going to say, you know what, we're, he's, I start to think that he's going to play the board wipe, um, but he does decide to play the air to at least bring back the Messenger of the Sun from Grave, but then decides to grab the Skeleton Horde here just to set up a little bit of a blocker wall for himself. The nice thing is here, he could Power of Immortality with the air um, to trade up into the Mosasaurus and then bring it back and revive the Messenger. Uh, and at the end of the turn, he does have to discard due to hand size, so the Skeleton Horde gets discarded. and discards another Messenger of the Sun as well. Another Donut Drone coming down here. Following that up with a Sky Round Technician to be able to pump up one of the Guinevere's. Ultimately, my green plan here is just to flood the board now, so that even if he does play in Athenia, I have plenty of things to sacrifice, and he's never going to be able to touch my stones. Skeleton Horde's going to block the Guinevere. Swing in with the Mosasaurus for 15. It says I'll block with the air. Thinking about if I want to do anything in response to that. So that's fine. And we're going to see that pump with protection of the angels so he's gonna turn it into a trade and then we're gonna use the donut drones effects to pump up the other guinevere and then swing in for a potentially large amount of damage or just leave it up so that we have access to camelot during um, paul's turn You decide to go ahead and swing. He throws the Skeleton Horde token underneath it. Already getting pretty close to being able to cast a Mystery Box here. Paul, looking at the runes, seeing if whether or not now is the time to go ahead and cast um, the Odin's Judgment. If I was in his shoes, I probably would, um, because I can't utilize those counters for anything, and it'll clear the board. He'll pay three wills, sure, um, but then he can start to kind of maybe re try to reestablish against this board. Meanwhile, if he can't do anything this turn and doesn't have a way to kill those Guinevere's, he's looking at a Camelot next turn, especially in response to maybe even getting attacked for a lot of damage. The first Guinevere can swing, um, and then I can swing with this, you know, swing with the six and then swing with the Guinevere that has a lot of counters on it um, and then use the other Guinevere to push through that damage if needed. He's going to go ahead and cast the Athenia here. Um, so we're going to see the uh, Skyron Technician get sacrificed. He does have another protection of the Angels in hand, which does protect him from the uh, potential Camelot play. And also he does have um, the Ring of Legend in Rune deck. So maybe he's thinking that he'll just apply it now. Um, so that he forces me to make him cast something, you know, and run myself accidentally into a train. Swinging in for five before doing anything else with my will. It's going to go ahead and block with the uh, Athenia. Going to use the other Guinevere's effects. to go and grab that Camelot and attempt to destroy the Athenia. He's gonna use the Flourishing Hope here to keep it safe. So the best course of action here would be to sacrifice the Guinevere that's getting blocked by Athenia, just to make it so that I have um, two extra counters on the other Guinevere again, and that's exactly what I do. And I still have all my will for the turn, so I've made him spend all of his will on his turn. So we're going to go ahead and see a potential scrap and build play here. He's 
So I didn't said to say, you know what, let's go ahead and cast Mystery Box from hand and see what we hit. Nothing to respond. He's tapped out currently. So we see uh, Misty Dragon Spirit, a Mosasaurus, a Skyron Technician, and a Lancelot. So a very powerful um, mystery box coming down here. Nigh unremovable uh, flyer that's going to chip him a lot. We're going to lock him out of some resources. Um, and we're going to get a lot of counters um, onto the board. Ultimately, we'll be at three as well. So we can even use the Lancelot to try to kill the Athenia if we need to. And then Mosasaurus as well gets to lock down three of the stones. So we're going to go ahead and hit um, the two stones of hope. Oh, no. We just hit three of the white sources, allowing him to keep the, the stones of hope. Oh, no. We do. Which makes sense. We want to cut him off for as much, from as much darkness as possible. This also means that I don't have to worry about a second Athenia being cast on the next turn, because he'll only be at four will. And we wanted to lock him out of triple white, so he can't do the board wipe this turn as well. So he's in a little bit of a dilemma here, um, because if he tries to power up immortality, um, he has to power up immortality in response. Um, but instead, he's going to do it just in the main phase before I respond with anything. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use Lancelot's effect to attempt to destroy him. So he's going to die before the Power of Immortality trigger goes. We're going to lose uh, Guinevere. We're okay with that. And then he does actually have what he needs there. I forgot. It's only double white for the Judgment. He's going to go ahead and wipe the board there. So tapped him out. Misty Dragon Spirit does get to survive because we flicker it out before the board leaves. We're going to go ahead and scrap and build here for eight. Seeing what we hit. We do see the second Camelot here. It would be an excellent grab. That is what we're going to grab and we can target up two. And so we're just going to target zero. It's just mainly to put another flyer on board um, because with the Misty Dragon Spirit swinging in, taking him down to 16, plus whatever I cast here from hand, um, we're going to go ahead and we have enough will to be able to Mystery Box as well. So this is nine Divinity here. So we hit a Guinevere, a Lancelot, another, we lose the third Mystery Box, um, unfortunately, because it does go to the graveyard. Um, but the Guinevere... Uh, and the Lancelot are going to help pump a lot of things up. And we can just use the, um, yeah, we can use the Guinevere and the Lancelot to put three counters onto the, um, the, ca the Camelot and say, remove that next turn or die. Because um, right now it would be swinging in for lethal with Misty Dragon um, backing it up. So taking him down to 16, saying pass the turn there. I was looking at his hand, seeing how he wants to maybe come back from it. Doesn't look like he has an Athenia in there. Um, he can do um, Judgments of Brunhild to bring back the Athenia, and it would put a flyer on board to help him deal with the Camelot. Um, he would still have to take the damage from the Misty Dragon Spirit, though. Um, and ultimately, we'd probably see the Athenia get killed this turn as well. Um, so the rest of the Resonators would also be able to swing through for lethal. So we are going to see the flip of the um, Brunhild here. It's going to reanimate to bring back the Athenia. 
the Athenia's effect is going to go. We're going to sacrifice the Sky Round Technician. Ultimately, I think the better call would have been to sacrifice the Guinevere here. Sky Round Technician is at least representing seven damage. Even with the minus two from Athenia, it will still be five damage. Um, and then still chose not to um, use the Lancelot effect here. I can use the Lancelot effect in response to him blocking. Um, so to like chip through that damage if I need to. Swing in the air for 15. Block with the Brunhild. And gives it a Ring of Immortality, or Ring of Legend, so it doesn't die. Swing in the air for 9, take him down to 7. See, he does have access to that um, protection of the angels here. We're going to go ahead and cast a Guinevere to pump up the Lancelot. Burn the counters to attempt to destroy the Athenia. He's going to go ahead and flourishing hope it so it can't be destroyed. And then at this point, having done that, we actually, uh, having the second machine actually guarantees lethal here. Um, because what I can do is I can swing into the Lancelot if he goes to block. Because um, I cast uh, maintenance here, which I can't. Ultimately, um, I, this is again a case of me not recognizing how much divinity I've used. Um, so we respond and try to destroy it. Ultimately, this wouldn't matter. Um, because we could just sacrifice uh, all of these machines that I have to pump up the um, Guinevere big enough so that she can just swing in for lethal um, that way. So a little bit of a misplay in terms of execution with the Divinity there, but that is the match. Huge thanks to Paul for sitting down. We'll put the deck list on the channel later this week as well as the Loki list. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.